Les Miserables and the dumbest bill in America. This is Mark Fisher with Mark and the Millennials. And of course, we have with us our millennial Christopher Hopkins, our producer. Welcome. And we have a special guest, Delegate Kathy Shalega. Welcome, Kathy. Hey, great to be with you, Mark and the Millennial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. This podcast, ladies and gentlemen, is called the Les Miserables America, which means the miserable ones, because the Democrats are just making this country really miserable. Hollywood is making this country miserable. I think everyone is making this country miserable who is on the left. And first up, podcast listeners, we have to talk about Slapgate at the Academy Awards. That's right, Slapgate. Have you ever seen anyone, Kathy, walk up on stage at the Academy Awards and literally punch them, like slap them really hard? It might as well have been a punch just because they were mad at what a joke was? Well, I will tell you, the only reason I even know that program was going on last night or the night before or whatever it went on in the last few nights was because of that. So <laughs> I'm not sure who's watching it, but it's certainly not me. Maybe that's part of their ploy. We, we've lost viewers. We'll stage this slap gate to get people to watch. I, I don't know. I think maybe that's possible. Or it seemed kind of real, too, because of the fact that Obviously, we had Chris Rock making fun of Will Smith and Will Smith's wife. And apparently we have this whole thing in America that you can't have humor. You can't have humor like to make fun of people. You can't you can only have woke humor. So podcast listeners in the Epic Times, Oscar organizer says it does not condone violence after Will Smith smacks Rick. Chris Rock, excuse me, the organizer of the Oscars ceremony on Sunday said it does not condone violence after Best Actor nominee Will Smith smacked presenter Chris Rock across the face during the live broadcast. <laughs> Quote, the Academy does not condone violence of any form. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, the professional honorary organization behind the award ceremony, wrote on Twitter after the ceremony. Quote, tonight we are delighted to celebrate our 94th annual Academy Awards winners who deserve this moment of recognition from their peers and movie lovers around the world. Well, podcast listeners, what ended up happening was is Chris Rock made a joke about alopecia. Apparently that's when you... Male pattern baldness. That's what my mother has. She, my mom got a virus, gosh, probably 25 years ago. And the outcome of the virus was she still has male pattern baldness, which is called alopecia. And that's so it's baldness in women. Yeah, well, it's for everybody. But that's kind of describes to people who don't know what that is when, okay. you know, everybody knows older guys lose their hair. But, you know, other people lose their hair, too. <laughs> So our millennials losing his hair. And he's like, yeah, they're I'm like, living that right wait, now. Wait, wait, so. they're like, not me, never. I'm never, just old dudes, they lose their hair. <laughs> Some young ones too. So podcast listeners, listen to this clip. It's Chris Rock basically talking about alopecia, making fun of his wife, right? He's making fun Which of Which I didn't even wife. know that, be, I mean, I don't follow any of these famous people well enough to know that Jada Pinkett Smith had um, alopecia. I, I didn't know either, right? I mean, I've never seen her bald before, but I guess she is. And on in the audience, she did look like, you know, she didn't have a whole lot of hair. Yeah, they should. I, they panned over to her. I wouldn't have known. And, and plenty of women I know, especially black women, wear wigs. Yes. And, you know, very common. So absolutely, I, you don't know how long she's had this. Absolutely. And... It, it makes perfect sense to me. We have that clip, though. You have to listen to it. And here it is. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win. <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please, Lord. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? <laughs> That was, a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Even Chris says wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. <laughs> name out your fucking mouth. Wow, wow. dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! 
I'm going to, okay? Wow. <laughs> I could, oh, okay. That was the greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> okay. Folks, that was on the Academy Awards. That was Will Smith was mad because Chris Rock made fun of Will Smith's wife's alopecia, the fact that she's getting male pattern baldness, right? Yeah. And then after Chris Rock made fun of Will Smith's wife, Will Smith got on stage, went, walked on stage, and then hits, assaults, assaults Chris Rock. Then Will Smith goes back to his seat. Chris Rock is stunned that this happened. And then that's not enough. Will Smith says, stop making fun of my blanking wife, whatever he said. I mean, but he said it twice. It was very clear. What did he say? Get your wife's, get my wife's name out of your effing face. Yeah, right get, get my wife's name out of your blanking face. Yeah. And folks, look, this is like total ghetto. They wonder why people don't watch this reaction. Well, I mean, the only reason I watched it is because that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then I'm true. wondering, isn't that that the one with the awards where they're like standing straight? Maybe the new awards can have a defensive pose. <laughs> <laughs> can we redo the statues? <laughs> but, but now maybe people will watch next year. Be like, who's gonna who's gonna duke out the other guy? But no. And on a serious note, totally classless. Totally classless. It was ghetto. It, it, you, I mean, it's like what you would do in the ghetto. Oh, man, you disrespect me, man. I'm going to shoot you. You disrespect him and it hits you. What? This is America. It's called humor. When you are a public official, right? When you are an actor, by definition, you are a public official. Will Smith and his wife are public officials, and they have to expect that jokes are going to be made at their expense. It's called humor. Get over it. Yeah. It, right? It, and... Again, when you're public, when you, when you agree, like nobody made them accept these roles and positions, like you and I are elected. No one made us. We worked hard to get to that position. Of course, people are going to criticize us. They do it every day. All the time. All every the time. day. And wouldn't it be great if Jada Pinkett Smith really owned it and really went, there are children that have this I. I uh, like to watch Ninja Warrior. I don't know if any of you <laughs> like Ninja Warrior, but if I was 20, 20 years younger, I would be on Ninja Warrior. Um, but one of the contestants that's a winner every year, he has alopecia and he talks about it and he brings kids to the show and they talk about alopecia. It's wonderful because, you know, that when you have that, sometimes you lose your eyebrows. Sometimes they lose their eyelashes. So all the hair falls sometimes, off your body? Sometimes. Sometimes. Wow. wow. So, you know, it depends on the degree to which wow. I guess. I don't I don't know that much about it. But so a I, smart woman could have turned this into like a real turn on, a right? Moment. It's like, yeah. A it's moment. Like, like, hey, like alopecia. Look, yeah, this, exactly. You know, and to help kids. I mean, there are kids that have this. Interesting. And so anyway, it, instead of... It, turning it into something productive and nice. <laughs> they took it so personally. And it goes so up and he hits Chris personally, Rock. Personally, to the point of violence. Yes. Violence. I mean, this is violence. He should be charged. I'm sorry. He should be charged with assault. Um, I think so, Will Smith. But apparently Chris Rock said, I'm not going to press any charges or whatever. It's like, he's just, he's a humorist. He's a comedian. And instead of laughing at him. So here, ladies and gentlemen out there in podcast land, is... Will Smith, after he wins the Academy Award, gets up and he tries to make it all about him. But he doesn't apologize to Chris Rock. Oh, no. He just kind of apologizes to other people. It's all phony. Here it is. We have that clip. Now, I know to do what we do, you got to be able to take abuse. You got to be able to have people talk crazy about you. In this business, you got to be able to have people disrespecting you and you got to smile and you got to pretend like that's okay i want to apologize to the academy i want to apologize to my all my fellow nominees um <laughs> that's will smith that's his apology after going up on stage hitting chris rock then going back down off of stage and using the f-bomb like at least twice if not three times against chris rock acting like the entire show is about him. I mean, it's just ridiculous. What this kind of what was that other show where the guy jumped up on stage and uh, I don't do you, do you I don't remember, re Chris? There's another show. There was another on stage. award show. Maybe it was a music award show and a, a rapper jumped up on stage and grabbed the. Um, oh, it was a 
It was Kanye West with Taylor Swift. That's what it was. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, that was when I was like middle school. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this may be the, you know, but he didn't smack her. He just grabbed the award away and said she didn't yeah. deserve it. Got to thank the millennial for remembering that. So if you just want to know how messed up the country is, you just watch the Academy Awards and you see what Will Smith did. He's supposed to be this very settled and, you know, mentally stable actor, which clearly he's not after watching what we just watched. And then if that's not enough, the Oscars have to basically attack you for being a family person and wanting to keep children children. So get this, podcast listeners, Oscar hosts taunt Florida. They make fun of Florida. They say, gay, gay, gay. And, um... If that's not enough, so what ended up happening is, is Wanda Sykes decided she would alienate plenty of people in Florida by attacking them over the state's parental rights bill in education. So we have a clip on this, and I just want you to understand, it's Wanda Sykes, Amy Schumer, and Regina Hall. They're all hosting the Oscars, and, you know, they're allegedly comedians, and their idea of funny is by saying that the Florida bill, House Bill 1557, is a bad bill. Remember, if you don't remember, we must say this, by the way, House Bill 1557 is that bill in Florida that says you can't teach about... Sex ed. Sex ed. Gender and identification. Gender, sex, sexual orientation. And pre-K through third grade, right? That's right. all the bill says. Pre-K through third grade. Well, and, and it just means no lessons, it, yes. it just means you're not going to have a lesson plan and a lesson in curriculum teaching those things to four, five, six, and seven-year-olds. Makes I mean, perfect sense to me. Yeah. Right? Because right. that's not why I'm sending my kid to kindergarten. Yeah. Well, of course, at the Academy Award, they have to make fun of this. Here is Wanda Sykes. We have that clip. Here it is. Well, well we're going to have a great night uh, tonight. And for you people in Florida, we're going to have a gay night. Gay, gay, gay. gay. Yeah, so that's those three hosts, and they have to make fun of Florida. And, of course, you can laugh at this, and it is kind of funny, but it misses the point, because that's not what the bill did, right? Of course. We all know that the, the word gay, as Ron DeSantis artfully pointed out in a press conference, does the bill say gay anywhere in it? And the reporter actually, I'm surprised, it actually read the bill. He, he didn't say, I don't know. He said no. So it doesn't. It doesn't say you can't be gay. It doesn't say you can't be gay and have your kid in the school. It simply says we're not having drag queen story hour in our public schools. We're not having lesson plans. These are subjects for parents and families to talk about at home. And I think it's reasonable and America agrees with it. So apparently they don't want anyone to watch the Oscars anymore. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, apparently your children can't watch the Oscars because it's not just because they're attacking your children and trying to talk about gender identity at the Oscars, but now you have assaults attacking, you have assaults occurring on the stage, right? You have an actual assault of Will Smith against Chris Rock on stage. Why would you ever subject your children to that? Yeah, or, or adult or anyone. Or so. anyone, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so if you thought you missed something because you haven't watched it and you don't even know what it's about, we're here to confirm you missed nothing. You can just watch <laughs> the highlights. <laughs> yeah, but it underscores, Kathy, why we're calling this podcast Les Miserables, which is the miserable ones, because the country is miserable because, in my opinion, of the culture wars of the left, including and especially Hollywood, but also the culture wars of the actual Democrat Party, which is no longer a, they're not Democrats anymore. They're they're Marxists. They're progressives. They're it's our way or the highway. You can't you can't raise your children to be safe at home and not have to be exposed to their culture wars anymore. Right. Well, they used to talk about tolerance. Remember that, <laughs> you know, they would say that we, the Republicans, the, the conservatives, the center, center right people, they were so intolerant. You're so intolerant of. And now they're you know, they've gotten past that. Now they're completely intolerant of us. I mean, th there's no there's no humor. There's no tolerance. There's a very rigid, rigid left line that they walk. And if you don't walk that line, they have no use for you. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so tolerance is out the door. So next up, podcast listeners, 
Governor Newsom buys votes again. Yeah, so get this. There is a monthly stimulus check in California coming your way very soon to help you pay for gasoline. Now, I thought that in California they were going to, I don't know, cancel gasoline and natural gas and oil and coal and everything else. Well, as it turns out, you need gasoline in order to live in the 21st century. So Governor Newsom is, do Newsom is doing exactly what he always does. He wants to buy you off and pay you off because he knows the citizens of California are utterly upset and just ready to tar and feather. Literally, they are. Excuse me, I'm not using this term in any racially meant way. I'm using this term in term I'm using this term in a way that the citizens of the state of California want to literally take Newsom out and get rid of him. I mean, because they realize he's ruining the economy. So Newsom is like, you know what? We got this huge bud budget deficit. We're going to use the money to buy you off. Here's KPIX CBS reporting on what the governor is up to now. We have that clip here. It is. Nobody likes paying as much as we do right now for gas. Governor Newsom's plan wouldn't change the prices at the pump, but it would put more cash in Californians' pockets. Gas is still expensive and people are still frustrated. And these days, the gas is going crazy. A gallon of regular gas at this San Mateo station costs $5.69. That's a bargain these days, considering the average price for regular gas in the Bay Area is now nearly six bucks a gallon. It is getting too high, yes. So on Wednesday, Governor Newsom announced a proposal for an $11 billion relief package to try and alleviate some of the pain at the pump. That direct relief will address the issue that we all are struggling to address, and that's the issue of gas prices. His proposal, if you own a car, you'd get a $400 tax refund that'll get mailed to you in the form of a debit card. If you own two cars, you'd get 800 bucks. The proposal caps the rebate at two vehicles. <laughs> so, Kathy, <laughs> you get $800 if you have two cars, $400 if you get one car and a stimulus check from the governor of California who wants to buy your vote. But get this, it's going to cost the average family $2,000 more on gas this year. So you're going to get $800, but it's going to cost you $2,000. So what's the issue? Is the issue the policy or is the issue the buy-off? Well, of course, they won't admit that their policies are why gas is $6 a gallon. And we know that. I mean, $6. We were screaming here at 4 I mean, $6 a gallon is incredible. But they do hate the oil companies. They hate gas. They hate natural gas. They, they want people to go back and live like they did in the 1700s. You know, I guess we're going to cook on a campfire outside and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sing around the campfire. Remember that commercial? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's here's the thing. Their policies are ruining the country. They're ruining the most one of the most beautiful states, I think, in the country, which is California. At least it used to be. And they're doing it by making it impossible for the average family to live there. So what Newsom does is he says, well, I'm going to just give you some money to buy you off rather than trying to fix the failed policy. But the failed policy is still there. Well, it's a Band-Aid, obviously, you know, on a gaping, uh, uh, on a, you know, a gaping wound. It's it's not even close to addressing the real problem. And people in California, man, they are overtaxed, overspent. They give all kinds of benefits to illegal aliens while the southern border in California is open. They're, they have an open welcome sign out there. They have all these illegal immigrants coming into their state. Now, granted, they are, you know, an agriculture state. If the government would fix the visitor visa program so that they could have an adequate number of ag, ag workers, we could have a different conversation. But you know, all of their policies are backwards. And then the Hollywood rich people going back to the, you know, the Emmys, they've all left. Yes. Because they, they passed a bill. They passed an um, amendment on on the ballot to tax the rich, to soak the rich. So the rich are moving and ruining other states. You know, they're going to Montana. They're going to Colorado and Texas, Utah, Texas, Texas, Texas. And they're ruining these other states. But luckily, there's not that many of them. So and, you know, the last time Newsom did this, the last time Newsom sent a stimulus check to the people of California was when he was recalled. And see, this is this is what's so dangerous, podcast listeners. 
Newsom did a stimulus check. It was, I think, several hundred dollars. Maybe it was around 500, thereabouts, right before the recall. So everybody in the state got this check. And of course, a little letter from Gavin Newsom, like, hey, here's some money. Well, of course, you're going to vote for Gavin, Gavin, Gavin Newsom again, because, and it's the same thing here. It's like, he's running the state into the ground with the gas taxes and the anti-petroleum industry. He's against anything that's to do with petroleum whatsoever. And then he's like, oh, don't worry. I'm going to send you $800. You poor peasants. You poor peasants. Here's $800. It's going to cost you 2000 more this year, but $800 I'm will help I'm surprised you. he didn't. Maybe the note will say, you could use this for a down payment on your electric car. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, of course, you know, you can't even afford to drive your existing car because of inflation. But yeah, they're like, yeah, well, just buy an electric car. Just, that will fix everything. We're sending you 800 bucks. Just go buy, put a down payment, get rid of those gas cars, get an electric car. It's a typical Democrat model, right? Create dependency to the point where you have to vote for that person because you become so dependent. So the best way to do that is to collapse the middle class, which is what the Democrat Party is doing. That's why we're calling the podcast Les Miserables, the miserable ones, because they're creating a miserable country. Well, the, their energy policies are, are out there are ridiculous. My my best friend from high school lives out there, and she doesn't use a clothes dryer. I mean, she hangs her clothes on the line. And th I mean, that energy is expensive, very, very expensive. I remember when my mother did that like years ago. Yeah. And she, it was like she had found heaven when she finally got a, a, a dryer. dryer. And this is when I was a kid, obviously really little. And it seemed normal at the time. And now when you think about it, you're just like, this is so backward. This is so like 19th century, 20th yeah. century. So anyway, next up podcast listeners, Nancy Pelosi calls early bird diners peasants. Yeah, you heard that correctly. So Nancy Pelosi, she obviously doesn't think very much of the deplorables that are out there in this country. And she's on a radio show, and they're interviewing her and just talking about different things because, you know, she's just so cool. She's so interesting. You got to have her on the radio. Um, and what does she do? She talks about how she likes to eat at a diner, you know, kind of like the peasants. We have that clip. And here it is. And to this day, my husband, Paul, who was born and raised in San Francisco, I was born and raised in Baltimore. To this day, he likes to dine at 8, and I like to eat at 5.30. <laughs> like a peasant. <laughs> God, she's, she's so... Remember when she used to be in front of the, the freezer? The Sub-Zero. The, the, the $20,000 Sub-Zero refrigerator. Get, refrigerator. Getting her Gucci ice cream out, yeah. you know, and talking about that. And now she likes to go to diners, you know, like the peasants. <laughs> her face doesn't even move when she laughs because it's so plasticized. What you know? is she saying about Baltimore? I mean, come on, hon. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she's, she's from people Baltimore. people in Baltimore peasants, hon. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she lives in San Francisco now, podcast listeners. But, but she did say she's from Baltimore. Yes. And so she must be a peasant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. The left thinks that you are a peasant. They really do. They they have become the elitist. They are the elitist. They think that you should drive a Tesla. Of course, you can't afford to buy a Tesla because you're just trying to buy food. I mean, they're so out of touch. Right? I yeah. Mean, well, looking for a bargain on, on a dinner especially if you're a senior on a fixed income, because let's be real. How old is she? 110? Oh I mean, God. she's well beyond 65. Is she 80? I think she's 80, 81. 81. Thereabouts. So listen, her peers are looking for a, a bargain because they can't afford to put gas in their car. <laughs> I have to play this clip again. Can you play this clip again of Nancy Pelosi talking about peasants, about how messed up her... Listen to this. Got to. And to this day, my husband, Paul who was born and raised in San Francisco. I was born and raised in Baltimore. To this day, he likes to dine at 8, and I like to eat at 5.30. <laughs> like a peasant. <laughs> I mean, she is the gift that keeps on giving. Like, how do they keep re-electing her in San Francisco? And how does, how does the Democrat caucus keep re-electing her to speaker? I, I don't. It, she is masterful. Exactly. Like, literally masterful. I, I don't know how she's doing it. She really is. So next up, podcast listeners, significance to the passage of time. 
You're going to love this. So your vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris, decided to speak about this issue. Not even sure what the issue is. Uh, but in the Washington Examiner, conservatives are poking fun at some repetitive comments Vice President Kamala Harris made regarding the significance of the passage of time. Harris repeated the phrase, the passage of time at least four times within the span of a minute, seeming un unable to move the conversation forward during remarks she made in Sunset, Louisiana last Monday. We were all doing a tour of the library here. Well, you know what, podcast listeners, let's just play the clip. And you tell me what you think. We have it, and here it is. The governor and I, and we were all um, doing a tour of the library here and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life of our children. I think I just lost a lot of time what? listening to that. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is, Kathy? That is the Vice President of the United States talking like she did when she was in a San Francisco coffee house, like smoking weed. It's Something. like, dude, man, the significance of the passage of time. And then she's got this audience and they're all like, man, yeah, let's get into that. The significance of the passage of time. Yeah, man. Here, take another toe. The significance of the passage of time. <laughs> In the life of children. But how do you end it with this? <laughs> I mean, this, she is. This is why. Passing time. I mean, she is. Maybe she is. The passage of time. Can there, you imagine her? Go ahead, Chris. There is no significance to that passage of time. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine her meeting with Putin? Oh, so. she was a disaster in Poland. President Putin. Yeah. Let's talk about the significance of the passage of time. I brought a bowl <laughs> custom made from San Francisco, California. Let's talk about that and let's talk about, you know, the Ukraine and the significance of the passage of time. Maybe we can pass some time together. <laughs> <laughs> and Putin, Putin would just like slap her in the face like Will Smith slapped Chris Tucker, you know? First, like, get he would, out of here. first he would take his shirt off and get on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> this is too good. This is too rich. We have to play this again, podcast listeners. Here's the clip. Listen. The governor and I, and we were all... Um, doing a tour of the library here and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life of our children. That is one vacuous vice president yeah, of the United like, States. Did Just she vacuous. lose? She must have completely lost her train of thought. And she couldn't <laughs> retrieve it. She kept thinking, it'll come back to me. You know what it was? And the, then she ended with children. Because <laughs> it is all about the children. I mean, come on. Kathy, Mars. you know what happened? The, the hamsters were on the wheel inside of her brain. And they're like... <laughs> All right. The passage All right. of time. Yeah. And they're just like, they weren't going fast enough. And, and then like, she was like, they're not going to, I'm not going to remember for the children. <laughs> so next up, podcast listeners, say goodbye to moderates. That's right. Say goodbye to the moderate Democrats. Is there such an animal anyway? In the Daily Caller, Representative Stephanie Murphy flame, flames the party. Yes, you heard that. Flames for promising rainbows and unicorns and abandoning moderates. Retiring Florida Representative Stephanie Murphy, she's retiring because she's going to lose, called out Democrat leadership for repeatedly siding with the left flank of the party against moderate members during a Friday interview. Murphy, a co-chair of the moderate Blue Dog Coalition, speculated that congressional leaders direct left-leaning interest groups to advocate for their specific positions and browbeat moderates. In other words, she's saying that her party has gone too far left, but here's the problem. So have they. I mean, are there any moderates left really in the Democrat party at any level, national, local, wherever? I don't think there are. Well, they might be there, but they're not allowed to vote that way. 
you know, you look at, you know, we're from Maryland. You know, we have Steny Hoyer, the number two guy to Nancy Pelosi. has been clawing. He must be 80 something too, isn't he? He's 81. He, he's been clawing and fighting to get to the top. And Nancy keeps, you know, <laughs> working with peasants. To, Slapping him. <laughs> <laughs> having dinner at 530 so she could outwork him. He was dining at eight with bottles of wine and she was still working. But nonetheless, yeah. um, you know, he used to be a moderate, right? And he's not anymore. Don't fool yourself. But, um, not. you no, know, there are plenty of Democrat congressmen across the country that probably personally are moderate, but they're not allowed to vote like that. The, the parties have been very polarized and and they have a litmus test. And if you don't vote with them, the AOCs of their party are kicking you out. Yeah. And, and so that's my question for you, Kathy. It's like if someone says they are a moderate Democrat and they're elected, but then they vote the way they're told to vote by their party, which means they vote for the progressive crazy stuff. Are they really a moderate? Of course not, because you can't have your cake and eat it too, because you're not principled. So if you say, I'm, I'm, I believe these moderate things and I'm willing to stand up for them, yet you don't vote that way, you have zero principles. You're completely motivated by power and prestige. Absolutely. And you should be voted out. You should be voted out. And I think they're going to be this election. But now, of course, they suddenly during this cycle, because the Democrat Party is so arrogant and are governing in a way that's just destroying the country, the so-called moderates in the Democrat Party are going, we're really moderates. Don't vote us out. We're the guys that you really want. We're the ladies that you really want here in Congress because we're the OK ones. And then you look at their voting record, as we just said, it's not moderate. They're still voting to eliminate all natural gas, all gasoline, all oil, putting us back into the last century. Oh, yeah. They want to turn the clock back. Yes, absolutely. So next up, podcast listeners, we have the wall of shame. You're going to love this story. In the New York Post, a New York City landlord posts a giant, humongous sign calling out his non-paying tenants. In a sign of the times, a fed up Queens landlord that's in New York City, posted two giant banners calling out his allegedly deadbeat tenants for owing him $17,000 in back rent. The sign says, my tenants on the first floor are not paying rent. And the bold posters slung above the first floor rental on 175th Street and Springfield Gardens. So there's this big sign, maybe Chris can show this on the video, if you can see this, because it's in the story, it says, my tenants on the first floor are not paying rent. Now, the interesting thing is the landlord is black, right? So why is that interesting? It's interesting because if you are an investor and you are a saver and you buy an extra property and that property that you are planning to get rent from is part of your retirement, it's part of your income, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. You expect people to pay their rent. They sign a contract. They agree to pay it. They're not paying it. In most cases, they can, but they're not doing it. And, I, and I, by the way, I feel very bad for those who cannot. I've been in that situation before, but that's not the case here. In New York, they are, Kathy, constantly putting off the day of reckoning and saying, well, you still don't have to pay your rent because, you know, the uh, pandemic. I think it's going on across the country, especially in the blue states where, you know, it is stop evictions, landlords are bad, property owners are bad, and they're, they're, you know, have this false narrative that landlords are these giant corporations like um, Jared Kushner, who owns giant buildings, but most of them are small mom and pop landlords. And here in Maryland, you know, I am a landlord. And during the COVID, I had landlords call me, it's a couple, they were getting ready to retire, they had three buildings, seven units total. So like a house with two apartments, a single family house with a couple of apartments. And they said three of their renters would not pay them rent. They wouldn't answer the door. They wouldn't pay them a penny. And they said they had to renegotiate with their bank. They're like, we can't, we're 60. We can't, what are we going to get a third job to pay the rent for these folks who won't even come to the door? 
I think it's great what these folks did. And and I've said, you know, we all know the website <laughs> Rate My Professor, right? Or people, you know, generally know. Well, there's a website for colleges that is a Rate My Professor. It's a private thing. So students can go and look and see, is this professor good, bad, indifferent? You know, and, and it's part of their calculus for taking a class. So my idea is some private person starts a website called Rate My Tenant. And then you get the tenant <laughs> And it's a private for pay service that you sign up for because I have left, been left holding the bag with some tenants. I can tell you some stories from tenants that have left owing us $10,000. Couldn't get rid of them. The courts won't let you get them out. They know, you know, they won't pay your rent, their rent. It, it takes the sheriff two months to get there to a victim. And you're out all that money and you could never recover it unless you, you never, go to, yeah, no. Because they're you, not going to pay. Of right. Course. Because, you know, if you're doing this as a small investor, like you said, it's part of your retirement. It's part of your income package. You're, you know, hoping that you need them to pay the rent. And Airbnb and uh, VRBO, like when you have one of those and you rent it, you can rate the person who rented your Airbnb or VRBO, and then they also rate you. That is a great point, as well as Uber, as so, well as Lyft, all of those. So I think this would be a great business opportunity. I don't know how you'd make money on it, but I think it's a great business opportunity. Well, you could charge landlord. You could keep it private. Yeah. And then you just charge landlords for a service and they would love to know how did this tenant leave your property? And of course, and, you know, in our state in Maryland, they'd probably pass some bill right away going, <laughs> you can't rate your tenants. That's not allowed. You, you can't talk about the fact that they don't pay their bills. Bad, terrible yes. landlords. Yes. They Landlord. are the evil. Exactly. Kill the landlord. Well, <laughs> I've started calling them property owners because they are not lords of the land. Oh, exactly. <laughs> 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 most of them are small mom, pa, people that are trying to, you know, they don't look, most people don't have a pension. Most people That's right. do not have a pension that is not part of your, you know, retirement package. Millennials, I mean, millennials, no, they're not getting a pension. They're probably not, you know, they're thinking they won't even get Social Security. Absolutely. So why not start building up? We know Kathy, our millennial, Chris, could rate his landlord because his first place burned down. It's like the entire apartment building burned down like one day when they weren't there. Thankfully, you weren't there. Thankfully. But you went home and the place is like burned down, no, right? We were, we were there. You were there and yeah. it caught on fire. Yeah. Not your apartment, no, but someone apartment else's. Someone else's, yeah. And then and it burned down. Yeah. Yeah. Whole so that goes both everything. ways. Yeah. So well, it, also it, it, it burned down and caused a lot of water damage and stuff like that. And But it, like half of the building or half of the building was just like. Burned. So you should have done a wall of shame for the landlord, you know? Yeah. But actually. It probably wasn't the landlord because wasn't it someone else probably smoking pot in one of the other units? Yeah, they said it was a boiler that exploded, but it was mm -hmm. on the top floor, so I don't really believe that. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a bowler yeah, that was yeah he was a, bowling. A yeah, boilers so. aren't on the top floor. <laughs> that does no, not make sense. That's what they said. I was like, I don't really believe that. Exactly. So. <laughs> well, and and like you said, it could go both ways. Rate Absolutely. my landlord, but you know yeah. the the good landlords. I think people know that's pretty so. easy to figure out. They have. You know, high occupancy rates. People, you know, yeah. they they take people, care of things. Then yeah, they then call when there's responsive. an when there's an open unit, that somebody's cousin or brother, you know, wants to Absolutely. rent it. But but the tenant thing, you know, there are some really derelict tenants, and the COVID has made it lawful to Absolutely. not pay your I rent. I agree with that. And there's some great tenants, so don't get me wrong. I rented for many years. I lived in a trailer. You know, I've I've lived in a lot of different places, and you know. There's nothing wrong with being a renter, but there's nothing wrong with being a property owner. We won't call them lords. That's right. No, you cannot call them lords. <laughs> and that's the wall of shame. And next up, podcast listeners, we have the dumbest bill in America. And do we have a lead up, Mr. Producer? Here it is. And it's the dumbest bill in America. You're not going to believe it. Moobs for dudes. <laughs> Moobs for dudes. That's right. Senate Bill 682 in the state of Maryland titled Trans Health Equity Act of 2022. Senator Mary Washington and Delegate Ann Kaiser on the House side. Senate Bill 682, the Moobs for Dudes Bill. Folks, you heard this correctly. This bill actually makes taxpayers pay for moves for dudes among other things we have a clip on this from the actual hearing here is mary washington a state senator from the state state of maryland talking about her bill 
Here it is. Listen. SB 682. Uh, does a few things. It requires that Maryland's Medicaid program provide gender affirming treatment in accordance with a newly created Section 15 15-15. -15. It defines gender affirming treatment as medically necessary, two, as prescribed by a licensed healthcare provider, and three, treats a condition related to an individual's gender identity. Second, it requires Medicaid to cover gender affirming treatment when it is medically necessary and according to the non-discriminatory uh, standards that are highlighted in the amendment. Third, it prevents uh, the denial of treatment under Medicaid based on gender identity and outdated standards of what is medically necessary. And also- uh, Yeah, so what is medically necessary? We're talking about the Trans Health Equity Act. So now equity podcast listeners is being used in the term of if you want to be a different sex, you must have equity in healthcare, not to check to make sure that your heart is working properly or not to make sure that, you know, you don't have high blood pressure or that you need statins because you have high cholesterol. Oh, no. To provide to provide dudes moves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw this it's to Kathy. Like, yes, this bill was in my subcommittee. And um, so, you know, look, this is this is like a foreign language to most people, right? Like you're wrapping your brain around it right now. So what this bill does is said Medicaid, which is publicly funded health care for poor people. So if you're on Medicaid and the government, which means us taxpayers are paying for your health care and you are a transgender woman. And what does that mean? I, I you notice I had to pause. So you're a man who now wants to be a woman. Okay. So All you're right. a biological man, but so we're calling that a transgender woman that you could get gender identity surgery, sex affirming, which mean a boob job. You could get a breast augmentation. So, so boobs for dudes, basically. Boobs for dudes. Boobs for dudes. Right. So I asked the question to the um, bill sponsor in the house. I'm like, look, you know, I have a friend. I was out with her about five years ago and she was called a man. And she was mortified. Like, I can't tell you how embarrassed she was. And if, if you're going to let a biological man have a breast enhancement, would you let my friend have a breast enhancement? Because it's for gender identity. Like, she really wants to not be confused as a man. Sure. And, and okay. she's, you know, a straight woman. But in your case, she had cancer. No, 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 no. She's just a woman that's pretty flat chested okay. woman. Okay. And she yeah. wants, you know, right. but the bill's called sex gender affirming. Okay. Gender affirming. So if you're affirming the gender, why can't women who want to be more affirmed as a woman, why can't they get a breast enhancement? Because it is truly the if that's what the bill's about, enhancing your gen, you know, what uh, wouldn't those wouldn't those boobs for dudes like slow down Leah Thomas in Pennsylvania? Well, like she's that top that's the he so, so it's the know, dude that's swimming that's winning all the won the NCAA title. Wouldn't, he probably wouldn't want to get that because that was swimming careers over oh because because right now that would slow him down <laughs> probably yeah i think so because it, yeah. it's you know like drag of course when you're well excuse the term <laughs> but like when you're I'm swimming it, it slows you down right yeah so so you're they not, told not, me they said no but, uh, but i'm he, like so i asked i said can you get a, an attorney he, general opinion like because if you're gonna let people affirm their gender let's let everybody affirm their gender right i mean why not hair transplants if you're a dude and you want a nice head of hair to affirm your gender as a man, can you get hair transplant? Like, if can't we be fair? If we're going to affirm people's genders and make them feel better about their gender. But of course, they said, no, Kathy, <laughs> no. This is only for transgenders. This is not for straight people. So it's primarily going to so be... it's not equitable, then. It is not. It, there's no equity. <laughs> Great job, That's our millennial. Chris. There our is millennial. no <laughs> equity in equity. <laughs> when only, does equity mean equity? Right. Only when you're a dude and you want boobs. Or how about for women? Like, what the would that be like? You could have a mastectomy, I guess. Oh my yeah. word! I mean, yeah. I'm sorry if you do that. You probably have a serious. Well, you do have a serious mental health issue. I mean, who would? Who would mutilate their body in that way? I mean, why is that equity? Well, why listen, is mutilation if equity? People want to pay for this with their own dollar. I still don't think that it's going to make you happy. But 
asking taxpayers to pay for that kind of surgery is wrong. Uh, I couldn't agree more. I agree with you. But does this apply to kids? Like, you know how they're trying, the Democrats are trying to teach children in pre-K and K and elementary school and middle school that they really, there is no sex. They can choose their gender. And that they can choose their gender. They really aren't biologically a boy or girl, which of course is a complete and utter scientific lie. But Democrats are trying to do that. Would this bill, Senate Bill 682, the moves for dudes allow children to get like puberty blockers and stuff not like that. Yet. So it's 18. So that's coming. But I would, that's why I said not yet. You have to be 18 years old. So, so right now you have to be 18, but the bill does talk about puberty blockers and, and um, so, other, other things. So, so this you know, is moves for dudes, but in the future we could have tits for tots. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, podcast listeners, the reason I do this isn't just for humor. I do this because of the fact that, this is how crazy the left is. They're trying to get a hold of your children. They're trying to get a hold of your children and convince your children that they are not a boy or they are not a girl. They're trying to do the same. And by the way, that's how we got where we are now. The reason we have largely, I'm convinced, so many adults who are 18 years of age or older who are saying they are not the sex that they, their biological sex the way they were born is because of the education system that's telling them that they're not. I'm convinced. Yeah, th- there's some activists that work within the public schools and they're getting bolder and bolder and bolder. And that's why the Florida bill was introduced because the activists in the school system are promoting this stuff. They absolutely are. And, and Nick Freitas, we uh, we interviewed him. He's uh, from a delegate from Richmond, Virginia. He uh, tweeted out recently, any male-owned small business not immediately recertifying as woman-owned with the SBA right now is missing out on contracts and set-asides. And if anyone on the left gives you grief about it, ask them exactly why you don't qualify. (laughs) (laughs) And then there's another meme that's out there, and it's this little boy. He's like four years old, and he's saying to his teacher in classroom, in a classroom, boys have a penis. Girls have a vagina. And then underneath of that is the Facebook information that says false information checked by independent fact checkers. <laughs> <laughs> you can put that independent check fact checkers, right? So well, it does make you wonder if now we need to do away with the women's caucus, women owned businesses. Like, do we need to title get nine? rid of all, t- you know, title? I mean, I've been a huge supporter of the, um, Save Women Sports, I introduced the bill in Maryland. You know, we do need to say that biological men, Leah Thomas, is not a a woman. He should not be allowed to swim against women. I agree. And the fact that the left has conflated all these issues and they can't figure out who's a man, who's a woman, have led us to because this. the left doesn't Supreme believe in court. truth. The Go ahead. Supreme Court nominee can't define what a woman is. What a woman is exactly. Yeah. And I, the uh, Babylon Bee has a has an article on it says NCA NCAA swimming champ caught in possession of performance enhancing testicles. <laughs> 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 and by the way, the Babylon Bee was canceled on Twitter because they were making fun of the Assistant Secretary of Health, Dr. Rachel Levine. Because she was made, what, like one of the top 10 women of the year by right. USA, USA Today or something. Right. And I heard this the other day, too, and I thought it was interesting. Tucker Carlson said, if the left can convince you about basic facts, that basic facts are wrong, like men are biologically men because of biology and the same thing with women. If the left can convince you that is not so, then they can convince you of anything. And I thought that was a really good point because that is Marxism. The purpose of Marxism, Marxism is to convince you that all of your thoughts about societal, um, about science, for example, uh, is not so. And therefore, you're willing to give up all of your freedoms because they convince you. What do you think about that? I, well, you know, it's funny. We're the same age. You know, in the science, scientific method. <laughs> we're not millennials. We're almost millennials. Barely, <laughs> barely outside of Hustlers. the... We have a millennial there. Hustlers. That's Chris right Wait, there. I'm millennial. identifying as a millennial. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like gender affirming treatment for that? <laughs> yes. Can you make me look 20 years younger? That'd be like... I s- do want that. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe if I just stop working yeah, and right. I can get Medicaid to pay for it. But, you know, the scientific method is my father is an atheist and he believes in the scientific method. So I was brought up, you know, kind of hearing what does that, to mean, that scientific method. So it means that you prove you put out an hypothesis and then you try to prove it, decide if it's right or wrong. Okay. And science guides you. You don't let you know, you have a hypothesis and then you test it. Interesting. You don't okay. say. Right. You know, that, um, you know, that I can't pick something at global warming. You, you can't say we so we know it's global warming. Now we're going to do our research to support it. It says is the climate is the globe warming and let's keep testing. Well, they call that. it climate change now, just so oh. you know. Let's keep testing that theory to define, decide if it is continuing. To so what you're true. saying is they're saying that because you dress like a dude, because you dress like a woman and you're a guy, therefore you are by definition a woman and we don't need to test anything Don't further. test it again. Don't we just take them at their word. But but this is the party. I thought they were the party of science. Didn't they call the Republicans anti-science? And I mean, Didn't they say follow the science for the last two years. And yes. Now it's it's the party of science fiction. Now, yeah. let's face it. They're the party of science fiction. Or political science. Yeah, yeah because they not, want moves for dudes. That's science fiction. I'm real sorry. science, which says Leah Thomas is a man and right. should not be swimming in women's sports. Did you see the governor of Florida awarded uh, posthumously the uh, first place NCAA championship to the woman who won, who was actually the second place winner because it was the only woman that actually truly won first place. But of course, the and NCAA she happened to be thinks from she Florida. Be <laughs> so he took that opportunity to acknowledge she really did win. But yeah, this party of, quote, the party of science is not very scientific because it is exactly what you said, Mark. When you can start saying that men are women and women are men and, you know, how dare you question that? And I can't define a woman. Definitions have no meaning. Yes. I mean, what what about no definition means anything, which is why it's I say to everybody, Kathy, and I say this to Chris, too. It's very important podcast listeners that you go out and you actually buy hard copies of books, including hard copies of dictionaries and so forth, because when you rely solely on going online to check what the definition is of a word or a term or you rely solely online to find out about historical events, I can assure you they're being changed and they're being changed frequently because we're seeing it in real time in the legislature when they say this is really a woman and you better call this person a woman or you could lose your job to which I say, look, I mean, if this individual really believes they're a woman, OK, fine, I'll I'll uh, be respectful. OK, I'll always, be respectful. always respectful, always right. respectful. But don't think for one minute that inside of my head. I'm not saying to myself, as I would assume most people who have a thinking brain left would say, that's a dude. And that dude is dressed as a woman. And, you know, that's got to be a really rough life if that's the way you want to live it. But good for you. Go go do what you want. But don't ask me to pay for, to put moves on the dude. I don't think I should be required to do that. That's ridiculous. That's against, by the way, that's against everything I believe. Yes. And, it and it's insulting to taxpayers as they're paying six dollars a gallon for gas in California and, you know, eight hundred dollars to fill your oil tank to heat your house. Yeah, they're they, not they're not addressing that. And don't send them the dude with the moves in the kindergarten class with children and talk to them about how he had a boob job. And the state paid for it. And by the way, they can be just like him when they grow up one day. I mean, that's what the Democrats want. By the way, that's what Senator Mary Washington wants. And that's what Delegate Ann Kaiser wants. They really want these individuals who have mental health issues to go into your child's classroom and talk to them how this is OK. This is OK. And that that they should talk about by OK. I mean, that it's OK to talk to people in kindergarten and first grade and second grade and third grade about these matters you know, like drag queen happy hour inside of kindergarten class. It's disgusting. Yeah. And, and, but let's not forget the real thing that they're doing. There's only six hours a day of classroom instruction. As a former classroom teacher, I will tell you the day goes quickly. And if you're teaching that, you are not teaching them how to read, how to write, how to tie their shoes, how to zip their coat, how to, you know, numbers, colors, letters, all the things that kids need, you know, basic 
foundational learning skills. You're not teaching that if you have time to teach the other thing, because the day flies like that. It, you know, when you're a teacher, you're you're really uh, teachers are wonderful and they are so dedicated and trying to fit all the basic skills in. And now you want them to throw What are you throwing out? What are you subbing? Exactly. And and the kid comes home and says, hey, mommy and daddy, guess what I learned? I learned about Senate Bill 682 in kindergarten, the Trans Health Equity Act of 2022. Isn't that exciting? And the parents are like, what? What? I mean, did you learn how to add and subtract, as you just said to your point, Kathy? I mean, go ahead. You have the last word on this. Yeah, the, the, we need. Let's just talk about what's important in school. What is important in school is reading, writing, taking teaching basic skills. We have school systems right here in Maryland. Baltimore City has, you know, 70% of the kids in a local high school cannot read at a third grade level. 70% of the kids. So why are we talking about these other things when you have an have an obligation to provide an adequate public education and that isn't happening everywhere. Because the left has lost its mind. That's why. They're just yeah. crazy. And I and think they that they're why mentally parents, ill, too. Why are parents upset? Because my kid can't pass the standardized test. Yes. And, that you're, and, and we're saying, don't teach that in school. And you're saying. But they know about trends. That's for yeah, sure. You know, right. that's, yeah, right. And that's the dumbest bill in America. Moves for dudes. And that's it for Mark and the Millennials. Thank you for joining Mark and Millennials. This is Mark Fisher. Thank you to our producer, Christopher Hopkins, and our guest, Delegate Kathy Shalega. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Getter, Rumble, and our website. See you next time.